Good evening, everybody. Good evening from late at night in Philadelphia. This is Brian. I've been on the road for almost a week now. I've been to two academic conferences and along the way participated in or given several different webinars and online events. And I wanted to share a few thoughts based on those experiences in regards to the fall for higher education. Uh, I think overall, I'm getting a sense of more parts of higher education being more concerned in improving the quality of student experience. And I mean this in a few ways. Uh, one of the events I went to was um, a really, really good conference for uh, food service workers in higher education. And it was fascinating. Uh, very friendly people, lots of information about food service operations and the problems they face. But one of the themes that I walked away with is that uh, this is a sector of higher education that is very keen on providing the best possible service to our population, including students, and they see themselves as having to cope with an ever more complicated student body, one that has varying dietary needs. Some of them are driven by allergies or other medical conditions. Some of those are determined by different cultural backgrounds. And so they see themselves as wanting to support those students, to give them the best possible food experience, and they want to do this with an eye toward sensitivity, which is just great. I also went to a conference for architects and campus planners. I gave a, or as part of a panel there, and found some really interesting sessions and conversations about supporting neurodivergent students. So there is the idea, which I think is pretty commonplace across higher education, that with increasing numbers of people with learning disabilities and or being on the autism spectrum, that academics have to do more to support these students. So there are some interesting sessions about how to do programs, but also how to create buildings and how to plan buildings, what kind of details need to be in them uh, in order to support neurodivergent students but also in general to try to aid students' mental health. There was a very interesting session from a California State University which described building a kind of campus retreat called the Oasis. And they found that the students who visited the Oasis even once in a semester had a higher grade point average than students who didn't. They also found that uh, students who visited the Oasis at least once were less likely to be on academic probation than students who didn't visit it. Uh, so there's a general argument about mental health there. And I think all these trends are likely to keep going. Uh, we don't fully understand the reasons behind the growing numbers of neurodivergent people. I mean, part of it is due to improved um, detection and part of it is due to a decreasing stigma around mental health. Part of it may be due to downstream effects of improvements in neonatal intensive care, but the fact is that we have more students who need this kind of support, and I think more academics are ready to prepare for them and to, and to support them. I think another thing to keep in mind is that we may expect a further enrollment decline this fall. So if you're new to this topic, higher education grew its enrollment in the United States until about 2012. And then for the next 10 years, enrollment dropped. Uh, it declined slightly in some years and then more steeply in others. Over the past year, 2023, 2024, enrollment picked up a little bit again. But it's not quite sure, we're not quite sure what's going to happen this fall. Uh, it's possible that the debacle or FAFSA, that is the United States federal government uh, student financial aid paperwork, which was massive, just, just screwed up any number of ways. Uh, there was a long delay in students being able to complete the form and get it in and learn about their financial aid. So it's possible we might see uh, an enrollment tick down as a result of that this fall. We won't really know until probably October when we get the first National Student Clearinghouse data. It's also possible that politics will depress uh, student enrollment. We know that uh, from a recent Gallup poll that American higher education is even in less esteem than it was before. And we know that a lot of that is politically driven. That is, Republicans are much more likely than independents and Democrats to view higher education unfavorably. And it may be that as the election between, let me check, Trump and Harris heats up, uh, that higher education may be uh, a battleground. I mean, this could occur in any number of ways. It could occur over Title IX. It could occur over Biden's drive to forgive some student debt. It could occur over DEI issues. Um, 
Trump has picked uh, J.D. Vance as his uh, vice president, and I've already written about the many attacks Vance has delivered against higher education. So on his own, as a cat's paw for Trump, he may make such attacks. We don't know who the Democratic vice president is. Um, I've got some ideas, but I, I, it's still really too early to tell. We know a lot of information, but the Democratic vice president may also engage in that. My point is, over the next few months, we may see higher education enter the limelight and not in a great way. Uh, furthermore, we may see if uh, Israel's war in Gaza continues, which seems likely to do over the next couple of months. As students return, we may see a return to spring 2023's encampments, which, again, may, you know, the appearance of which some in higher education have blamed with decreasing enrollment or decreasing uh, admiration for higher education. So all these things put together suggest we may see a little downward pressure on enrollment this fall and academics are ready to do various things in order to support students. So again, it's this theme I've been noticing over the past you know, roughly decade of perhaps decreasing quantity and increasing quality. Well, I hope all of you in higher education are safe and sound and uh, I'm gonna actually go to bed. It's late at night. Bye-bye.